each year in early spring, we make a pilgrimage back to the source. For the last 10 years, we've come here to photograph our winter ranges, but it's not just a photo shoot. It's like coming home. It reminds us of what it's all about to live in this amazing country. We reconnect with the families of Merino growers. We explore the unspoiled national parks and virgin forests that neighbour the Merino stations. And we meet the adventurers, climbers and guides who live in the mountains, working off the land. So when I was a kid I grew up in the South Island and uh, every day we could see the Alps. In the weekends we'd get skiing. But um, coming here and feeling the pulse of this place, it's so vast, it's so big and rich and raw. It's a place that most people don't get access to, which is why we try and share it back through our photography and back through our imagery, because it's more than just a picturesque pretty place, it's the spiritual homeland of the brand. About 20 million years ago, two colossal tectonic plates collided beneath southern New Zealand, pushing up the Earth's crust to eventually form the long line of mountains that runs for 600 kilometres through the South Island. It's a world of contrast in our southern Alps. Beautiful and serene one minute and the most hostile place you can imagine the next. To survive here, creatures have had to evolve and adapt. This is the home of the Merino, and the home of your icebreaker. So, welcome to Lake Hawea Station. This is part of our fibre factory. About 300 kilometres uh, up there is the beginning of the Southern Alps, and collectively, all our suppliers cover about 2 million acres of the Southern Alps which produces about 500 tonnes of pure merino every year. My grandfather bought the property in 1912. Uh, at that stage it was, it was totally unfenced and, and there was no house on the property. Here we have 12 months growth of wool. It's approximately four and a half inches long. Beautiful, clean and white. Nice, pink, healthy skin. This guy's in really good nick. And uh, he's producing a great fleece for your icebreaker. What I really love about uh, producing wool for icebreakers is, is not just living and working in this environment, but it's being part of producing a garment like this that we can work and play in. Uh, you see people using it up the ski field when you go to the pub, uh, everywhere you go. And it's just something that I really feel proud to be a part of. The best thing a high country man can do is climb a mountain and early in the morning and, and just be you on know, a beautiful day and it's, it's the next thing to paradise I think. Uh, this guy's got the best job in the world. Uh, he spends 11 months chilling out with his mates and then one month of uh, doing the business. Uh, he In that month he has to service 100 ewes, um, so yeah, one month of uh, extreme fun. Others, who are also fortunate enough to have the Southern Alps as their backyard, work as mountain guides or in professional sports, testing themselves in these extremes of climate and terrain. Queenstown in the Southern Alps is my home. This is where we like to spend our time. It's an amazing part of the world. It's uh, the lakes, the mountains, it's, it's rugged, it's beautiful. As a training ground, the, the Southern Alps, I believe, is unsurpassed. It's, it's easy to access and you can get yourself into some pretty extreme situations incredibly quickly. So uh, being in the mountains is like being at home for me. When I leave the hustle and bustle of the lowlands behind, getting that helicopter, you kind of feel a relief almost to get into these areas and you feel like you're coming home a bit. 
something else. It's, it's our playground. It's for us to explore. There's so much unexplored terrain up here, especially on skis. The ski descents are just magnificent and um, the risks are full on. And yeah, you don't want to be unprepared in the mountains around here. Your icebreaker was born in this wild environment and designed to allow you to survive and perform in extreme conditions. Oh, it's just such an amazing, uh, amazing place. You, you see pictures of books, but it's not until you actually get up here and you breathe the fresh air and you look around and it's just so goddamn beautiful. And uh, it's just great inspiration. Uh, inspiration that we draw from when we're taking the photographs. And hopefully when you see the photographs, uh, you, know, you can sort of get a sense of what we've experienced. The place, I guess, the high country for us started as a source of fibre and now it's a source of inspiration. 